Hi everybody, this is Gary Dean with Sentiment Timing and this is our uh, technical analysis training video and this is going to be the video that um, you're going to be able to watch and make consistent winning trades month in and month out and you're going to be trading with the pros and uh, not against them and I'm going to be giving you the tricks uh, that I've used to uh, basically go two years without a losing trade, but I really need your help. I need you to hit the uh, the like button. I need you to hit the subscribe button, and I need you to hit the notification button because the more people that we get on this channel, the more information I'm going to be giving you, and they're not going to be just tutorials. They're going to be actual tradable information. So please hit the like button, hit the subscribe, and hit the notification, and Thank you in advance, and without further ado, let's get started. Hi, everybody. This is Gary Dean with Sentiment Timing, and this is our technical analysis tutorial that will have you trading like a professional. So I've been uh, trading the stock market for over 25 years. I've, uh, I started Sentiment Timing uh, about 2013. And that was with Woody Dorsey, and it's a it's a pretty uh, well known market timing service that we have. And I'm the technical uh, the technician for the for our service, and that's really what I'm going to be teaching you because uh, what we do it ha it has a lot of different moving parts to it, but a big piece of it is uh, is the regular technical analysis, and I believe that. I'm going to have a lot that I'm going to be able to share with you. So as I said, back in 2013, I uh, partnered up with uh, Woody Dorsey, and uh, he's he's a renowned uh, market timer. He's, he's uh, been on basically every one of the, the major financial news networks, and he's been, uh, his big claim is that he's a one of the the pioneers of investor sentiment. And that's a big piece of what our service is. But I'm not really going to go over that. I'm going to tie all that in a little bit later on with some other videos. But right now, I'm doing strictly technical analysis. So one of the pieces of our that we do is the uh, predictive analytics model. And it's a, what it is is time. And that, that's when, it, when the, we're predicting that the uh, trend will reverse. Uh, sentiment is is the herd mentality. So why it's going to reverse? Because the majority of people are going to be left on the wrong end of the uh, trade. And then the technicals is where. And this is what we're focusing on right here is is the technicals. So that is uh, you know and exactly what I'm going to be going over today. The technical aspect of the predictive analytics model. So let's get started. So um, in this video, I'm going to show you uh, the uh, technical divergences, Elliott wave counting, and again, it's going to be dumbed down. It's not going to be uh, all the minor little wave structures. This is going to be for beginners. So um, the support resistance levels and how I use them and then uh, just regular, uh, some chart patterns that are in there. And the one that I'm really going to be showing you uh, today is the, uh, is the bearish uh, and, and uh, bullish wedges. So the, um, uh, uh, let's, uh, for technicals, uh, when using technical analysis, you should really be, uh, you should look at different time frames. And you, you really want to do that because it, it, you can be sitting there trading a 60-minute chart and thinking that the market's going to be heading lower or your stock's going to be heading lower because uh, some technicals are giving you that, that view. And on a short term, it may be doing that. But if you take a look at the daily chart, the daily chart is screaming that the, that the market or, or whatever you're trading is going to be moving higher. So it's really, really important to look at uh, the different time frames on it. And I'll show you exactly how I do that. So the daily chart is used for uh, really the current long-term uh, trend. You want to be following that. But the 60-minute chart is used for the swing trades. So if the daily chart is in, a, in let's say, an a intermediate-term bull market, you don't just have to trade the long trade on it. That's going to be your, your primary, say, trade is going to be long. But you can, you can scalp and, and do swing trades with the 60-minute charts, which I, I will show you. And then the 15-minute charts is mainly for the entries and exits on it. So if you see divergences on a 15-minute chart, 
uh, but not on a 60 minute chart. One can assume that there will be a temporary pause, meaning that if the if the uh, stock is coming up and doing this, it, it could go, you know, come down some. But being that we don't have any divergences on the 60 minute chart means that what's going to happen is we're probably going to take this out and then that's going to give us the divergences. And I'll show you them in real, you know, live uh, uh, charts on this. But it's just a, because the 60 minute chart, though, is not giving us the sell signal. So this is why we you, what you're anticipating that it's just going to be a pullback before that high is taken out. And this is the one where you're going to be looking at that it's going to be an ending move to it. So um, let's take a look at some divergences and so you can get a good idea of what it is. Um, divergences occur basically, I mean, it's fairly simple. When price is moving in the opposite direction of the technical indicators. So a bearish divergence means that the, you have stock, pro, or this is the S&P 500. So you have the S&P 500 heading higher as the technical indicator is heading lower. So that is a bearish divergence. Now, a bullish divergence is basically the opposite, where you have price heading lower, and here you have the technicals uh, making higher lows. So this is the bullish divergence. And you can see what they're very, very good here when you have these, uh, the, you know, the bearish divergence, what you wanna do is then just wait for a break of support here. And when that happens, that triggers your short position and you can see what happened. We went straight down from there. Now, the same thing happens with, uh, with on a bullish divergence. I'm sorry, it's hard to draw your, your lines on this, but once we break through this, this, uh, this resistance level, it's when you get long and this is really what happens from there. You get a big move to the upside. So bullish and bearish divergences are a huge part of my trading. And it, it, I'm, I'm gonna, hopefully convince uh, you that it, it should be a huge part of your trading as well. Because I, I mean, you could look, I could look at a chart in a matter of seconds and say, you don't want to be looking to buy that right now. You want to wait for the, you know, the price to come down to a certain level and then look to buy it because, or you want to be uh, looking to short it because it, there's, there's sell signals. But I can look at a chart in a heartbeat and know that uh, whether you should be looking to buy it or sell it. So let's take a look at a, a real example here. Now, this is going back November uh, 2021. And this is when we had that huge bull market going on. The Fed was uh, zero interest rates. Everybody, there's huge amounts of liquidity in the market. And this is a bearish wedge right here. And it, what it means is that you can see that the, there's the trend lines on the top and the bottom. But what happens is they start squeezing together here. And, and I'm going to actually put a few things together on this one. So I'm going to be going over a little bit of Elliott Wave on this. I'm going to be going over divergences and uh, patterns. So you're going to you're going to get a lot out of this one. So anyway, here's your, your, your it's a bearish rising wedge, meaning that it, it typically these these happen and, and there's there's bullish uh, falling wedges, the same thing. But this is a bearish rising wedge. And what it means is that the bulls are just pressing the tape higher and higher and they're not giving any kind of breathing room. They're not taking any breaks. And what happens are every pullback is is very shallow before they take out the highs. Now, typically, a lot of people look at that and say, oh, that, that's bullish. But the thing is, is that once these things start tweezing together, it doesn't take a whole lot to break through it. Now, this broke through. But if you look at the wave structure now, Elliott Wave, again, I'm going to I'm going to dumb this down because it, it is complicated. And it, it's a so Elliott Wave, the really the main thing you have to just know is that it's five. You just count to five. So you have one. Here's wave two, wave three, four and five. Now, within a bigger move. So th this is you had five waves here, which is one. Here's our wave two. Now you have one, two, three, four, five. That's your wave three. This once it broke through that wedge, this was your wave four. And then this is the wave five up. Now, again, you don't it, it don't be all upset if you don't understand this. I, I will go over it in a little more detail in another video. But the thing is this is that one thing that a lot of our members know, and I and I I preach this and I pound the table is this, is that you do not want to be jumping on the trend, uh, uh, say, 
train or believing that you're missing the boat on, on the move on wave five because you are asking for trouble. Because the way that this typically works is that once this wave five completes, uh, you are going to get anywhere from a 50% uh, to a, a 78% retracement from this low to this high up here. So if you look, these are this is what we're looking at. We're looking at a 50% retracement was 34.41, and then a 62% was 3140 and that's when we had price was trading all the way up at uh, at 4700 so it was a huge move to the downside if it was going to play out and now let's uh you know let's take a look and see how it did play out and if, if we just look at it hang on one second i'm just trying to uh get my chart one line here um let's go. okay um so anyway okay so here's the uh it did, Okay, so this was that, and now here is the reaction part of it. So you can see here, this was what I was selling you, the one, two, three, four, and five. Here is that, that rising wedge, the bearish rising wedge. Here you can see we had bearish divergences in place here. So uh, you, this is the wave five that I talked about. So this was a little mislabeled here because I had this as the wave five. We went 100 points higher than this. But this was the reaction trade. For every action, there's a reaction. And the fact that the bulls kept pushing price up here, we had sentiment that was at like 99% uh, up, up at these levels. We actually hit 100%. It was pretty easy for us to figure out that this was an ending move right here and, and to look on the short side. And then we had these bearish divergences that, that labeled the wave three to four. And then we had bearish divergences for the wave four to five. So there, it was sell signals everywhere. And we already know what the, the, you know, the end result was. It was a move from uh, 4,800 all the way down to 30, 3,500. And it was a massive, massive move to the downside. So what I was saying before with the, you know, the overall trend from here was down, but you were able to trade these moves, which were fairly big moves on the upside. And then, but you just knew they were trades until we got the panic low. And this was the support area that was in play that we've been looking for from all the way when we were up here. This was our, our downside target was right here. So once we got here, everybody panicked. So the, the thing is with sentiment, which again, <clears throat> I'm not really going over that, that right now on this one. But the thing is with sentiment is everybody gets bullish at the tops and everybody gets bearish at the bottom. So we had, a, I think it was, uh, there was five different 0% uh, bullish sentiment readings, meaning that everybody was bearish when it was down here. Nobody was believing it was going up. And if you notice, look what we had. We had bullish divergences that were forming. We're very oversold. And if you actually look, if I, I, can, I'm not sure how to remove these things, but we actually had a, a, a bearish, uh, we had a bullish wedge that was in play. And, and that was, you know, once we broke through this trend line right here, things took off and, and here we are. So when, when, the, when the price was dropping here, we had the buy signals and we were buying. It was scary, but the thing is you have to trust the uh our, our predictive analytics model. And we knew that we were expecting a turn in October. Um, we had uh, the wave structure that was that was in place. We had bullish divergences on the daily chart. We had everybody that was not believing in, in this market that it was gonna bounce. And as everybody's panic selling, we're buying. And the, the, the best part about trading like this when you're anticipating the, the, the move in advance, meaning that when, when it's moving up, you're anticipating it moving down and you're looking at different pivot levels to, to it, up here, we were looking on the short side, down here, we were looking on the long side. And the thing is, is that when the, the biggest part of the move usually happens within the first two weeks of the trade, and then it starts kind of coming down. But this, this right here, we had a big move, but it's taken all the way from April till uh till July, but this was the very easy money on it. So you can see now that we actually have bearish divergences. This is a live chart. Well, not a live chart, but this is going on from today. 
Um, so we have bearish divergences setting up, very overbought, and look where we are. We're at resistance. So this is how I, I really use these, uh, you know, the, 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 the bearish and bullish divergences. Okay, so what I want to show you now is we're, we're going to the hourly time frame. Because remember what I said in the very beginning is that you want to go from uh, longer term time periods and then go down. And the longer term is going to give you the overall direction, but the hourly is going to give you the swing trades. And then the 15 minute gives you the entries. So if we just go back, because this is going back to this chart here where we had the, you know, the one, two, three, four, five. And this is going to help you out a little bit with the Elliott wave. Because it, this was the wave three. So if we remember that that's this move right here. And now what happens, you can see we had the bearish divergences right here and we had the move down and here's the bullish divergences on the 60 minute chart. And we being that you knew there was still, you know, you, which I will teach you more about, um, you know, the, the wave three, whether there was a wave four, there was still going to be a wave five. You knew that. Uh, you, you know, being that you're a, a savvy uh, a technical analysis trader now, that this was a four, we had the bullish divergences, and wave five was going to take out the wave three here. So this right here, now you just start counting your one, two, three, four, five, and this ended up being exactly where it was. So we got the pullback here. Here we got the last move up it, where it made it up to the 4,800. And we had the massive bearish divergences that set up and that set up with the, uh, you know, the move that we saw here. So this is, you know, again, just using, you know, your, your bullish and bearish divergences and why it's the, the main thing that you really want to look at before anything. So if there is nothing here, let's say there is no trend lines, no wave structures, I can look at this right here from this point and say, okay, well, this is a, a bullish divergence here. So I do not want to be looking to get short here. I want to be looking to buy. And then from there, what you want to do is figure out where the support level is. Or if you wanted to wait for confirmation, you just wait for this top to get taken out here. You buy it, you would have been a little bit of stressed out here. But the thing is, this was the end result. So the, these buy signals here, it, it's telling you not to short. Now here was telling you not to jump on the long uh, wagon because we had bearish divergences and we also had bearish divergences on on the uh, on the hourly chart as well. So it, um, it's on the daily chart. So this is how you you know you, you use these uh, divergences and it, it's my number one tool. This is uh, before I look at anything else. I, I'm looking at whether we have buy signals or seg or sell signals. And then I determine what pattern is in play on this. So if we then take a look at the 15 minute chart here, and let me just kind of move this uh, down a little bit. Okay. Um, okay, so this is the 15 minute chart. And again, you can just see these are your entries and exits where we had big bearish divergences going on and it just chops around, but it, it's it's more where you want to be looking to, to get in from either long or short from the 60 minute chart. So if you're, you know, if you're here, you want to look at the 15 minute chart. Is everything lining up? Yep, we had bullish divergences as price made a lower low and here we made a, a, a higher low. So this was your trigger. Again, if you could just use this, whatever the trend line, right? Uh, this this re, uh, resistance, once it broke through, this is your trigger to go long and then you could just buy this dip and put your stop here and then you just ride it up and every time you make a new high if you want to just swing trade this you put your stop right there so once we go up then then it comes down again and once we it once it comes from this so your stop is here meaning that we, we took out this high here so it goes above it now we're doing a little bit of retracement your stop remains there now, once we take out these highs, then your stop moves up to there. And you just keep doing this until you get stopped out where, you know, you, you're going and now your stop is here and eventually you get stopped out and it's going to be all the way up here. And now you simply switch on the short side and it, it's the same thing when it goes up and it goes down like this, your stop is going to be at this part. So it's the same thing on it and what you're looking for. And again, on a 15 minute chart, you're going to get some uh, 
you know, some, some moves going back and forth. It, it, you want to really concentrate if you're making trades, uh, you know, swing trades is the hourly chart because that, that's going to allow you to hang on for, uh, for a, a, you know, a little while. All right, so let's do a recap on this. So technical analysis on with Elliott Wave, um, you want to you you, you want to be it, it's basically showing you whether the trend is going to continue or it is it going to be near a larger reversal. Wave fives are not the wave that you want to jump into on a current trend, and that I will pound home to you guys. It's probably one of the most important things, especially if you try to learn Elliott Wave. This is it. Wave fives are no nos because everybody seems to get overly bullish on on the on the trend and overly bearish on the trend on these wave fives, and they get absolutely slaughtered every single time. There's no, uh, I, I've never seen it not be like that. And the thing is, what what I mean by uh, you know with, with this sentiment part of it, which again I'm not going to confuse you guys on this. This is part of our premium stuff, but. If you notice, look, look at up here when we're at these highs, everybody's bullish on this market because it's up here, 99, 94, 93, 91. But then when we came down here and we had this crash here, everybody's bearish on the market. And guess when that was? Right before we were about to have that next move up. So it, it's, you know, the, the thing is, the, these cycles, they repeat month in and month out. And being able to, uh, you know, to, to, put the technical analysis to that makes the trading a lot easier and why, you know, I can go, I've gone two years without a losing trade. But in any case, um, once the wave five's complete, it's a 38%, I'm going to go, it's not even that. I'm saying it's more 50, 62, or 78% retracement from the, uh, from where wave one started to where wave five topped and, and it ends up being a pretty good number, meaning that the, uh, um, let me just try to get to where that chart was. Okay, so from here, you can see it was 61% was uh, 3140 as the S&P was trading up at the 45, uh, 4800. So it's a, a, you know, it's a, it's a big move on it and why you do not want to be trading the wave five. So uh, divergences are used to identify potential trend reversals, uh, bullish divergences, technical indicators are making a higher lows as price is making uh, lower lows, uh, vice versa with the bearish divergences. Um, if the current trend is higher with no bearish divergences on the hourly charts, but bearish divergences on the 15 minute charts, you're going to expect that the market, is, you know, if it was heading up like this, that it's going to have a little bit of a pullback and come back down to one of the support levels. And then from there, head back up and take out the highs because that's going to form the bearish divergence. So that, you know, when you, when you see it on a 15 minute chart, you, you just want to, you want to expect that we're, we're going to get a little bit of a pullback, but these highs are going to be taken out. And then that's going to set up the bearish divergences on the 60 minute chart, because really the way that works is when yeah, you're, you're up like this, like let's say we have a, uh, a a nice move going up like this. I'm just pointing this out. And when you get the little bit of a pullback and then it, it allows the, the technical indicator to come down and then it makes a, a, a lower high. And I don't know if this even did it on that this particular one, but I'm just pointing out that that's really the, the way that you look at it where the 15 minute chart allows for the break and allows for the technicals to come down and the bearish divergence would be that you don't make a higher high and that's your sell signal right here. So um, that is that piece. Now, what is else do I have here? Um, okay, so that, that's it on the 60 minute chart. Now, I want to just go over one last. All right, so what I want to go over now um, it, as I had said, for every action, there's a reaction. And, it, you know, members of mine know where I say if this particular pivot gets taken out, the reaction trade is going to be down to here. Or if this gets uh, it gets taken out, the reaction trade is going to be up to here. So th the, the, what this is right here is what I call the bull bear line. And this was because we were heading up. It, it was on the upside. So that once we broke through it, you can see it's then used as support. The upside target was going to be this resistance. And you can see right here, this resistance from here. And then this was the first resistance right here. 
And once we got above it, then the, the bulls were in the clear, but you can see we started having some bearish divergences. Don't worry about this. I'm, I'm going to go over the, uh, the NIAD in a, uh, the advanced decline in another video, but it, it's again, just a lot of things that I, I have to share with you guys. But in any case, once we, once we broke through, once we, uh, went up here and we came down this cell zone is now now your support zone so once that was taken out what happens is once it gets back up here you can see it's now being used as resistance again and you can short it and then once it took out the bull bear line which was down here was your target area and these targets were put in place well ahead of uh what when the, this move was down here and then when it was up here, that's when the support zone came in. So this is your your action and reaction, uh, you know, trades where if you, they take out the bull bear line, and and the bull bear line is simply because you can see this is where they they had you know battles going on where the the bears were trying to push it through, the bulls were holding it, and when you touch it, so once this line was either taken out on the upside. Or the downside momentum was going to pick up and and that that's what your reaction targets are so okay so in this chart what i'm going to be showing you and th these are some of them are older i just you know i i didn't feel like going through all of the charts right now and trying to find patterns i had these mapped out so i just pulled them up but this here you know you can see it you're looking at resistance and all that but the thing is we're heading down and but if you notice, remember I was telling you about the bullish and bearish wedges. Well, here's the, the it's a bullish wedge, and you can see how it's getting very very tight down here, where the bears are just pushing it down. But notice this: we have bullish divergences here, we have bullish divergences here. So what are you going to be doing? Are you looking to jump on the uh, the bandwagon on the downside? Or are you looking for support areas to buy? And again, that's what you should have learned in this is that when you see these divergences, and again, this is uh, th this is on a uh, on a 60 minute chart here, um, you want to be looking to buy. And really, the first target is be you know. So we were down here at the at the, right around that 2300. First target was going to be 2550, which is an actual decent little uh, gain from 2300 on what, let's say 250 points. But then the next one, then it goes up to the, the, if it gets through this level, then you get up to the bull bear line, which is 2,700, now a 400 point uh, move. And then if you get above that, then we're looking at a move coming up to the 2,884. So let's take a look at what took place from these divergences and everybody that was, you know, bearish on this market and looking lower was this. We have a move that came to the 2200 this is where i was saying everybody was bearish on the market and we went all the way up and made those new highs at 4800 so this is the power of of really seeing these divergences and and just not listening to what the talking heads are telling you because they'll mess up your trades all the time and and i i hear about it all the time where people you know especially you know because when when i tell you that we I've gone two years without a losing trade. Um, it, it has not come without some stress uh, here and there. And I'm in I'm in a stressful trade right now uh, for the main reason I just didn't see this uh, the big move coming at, at this particular point from the triple witching and the uh, end of quarter win window dressing. We were able to get in and out of some trades, but I, I'm still I'm on the side that I we're going to have a big move to the downside. Um, we're you know we're down some, but it, it's going to come back for us. And, and, you know, knowing that when the, the next turn date is through our predictive analytics model, I'm able to hold on to things and, and I'm looking at bearish divergences that are setting up. As a matter of fact, here, I'll, I'll even show you the chart. And you can see everything that I was talking about in the video uh, as far as the patterns and the divergences. And even here with the Elliott wave and, and they, these patterns will show up over and over. And if you just pay, if you're patient with it, you can get, you, you can make uh, two, 300 points on the S and P, uh, you know, on a month to month basis. But here you can see we had uh, bullish divergences as the S and P was making a lower low. Um, from there, you can see the massive move to the upside. We went from, uh, this was at 3,500 all the way up to 4,100, a 600 point move. 
Um, and then as we are up here, remember my favorite pattern, the bearish wedge or the bullish wedge. Uh, this one is bearish and we, we close this gap, which is another thing that I'm going to go over in another video are gaps here. Um, but here you can see we, we, we went, we broke through this wedge here uh, and look what we had bearish divergence is in place. And from there, we had the S&P that went from 4,100 all the way down to 37. So almost a 400 point move. And then from uh, these levels, there, there really was no um, no buy or sell signal here. So you just be patient on it. But here you can see we had a little bit, but it's more the, the uh, let's just say the, the, the wedge pattern that was being formed here. And, and this is, uh, you know, th these patterns will show up over and over again. And if you just look for them and just the, when you see these types of moves, you just know that they're going to wait for a, a move to the a break of the trend line. And then from there, you just turn around and, uh, you know, and, and look to short it. But, you know, the, these patterns will they'll show up over and over. And then uh, even on the downside, you know, it's the same thing. People are just they're it, it's like we're in an all in all out environment and and knowing these patterns and what to look for um you know you, you can make a boatload of money on, on these and and again the biggest part is just being patient and knowing that uh you know you don't have to be in a trade all the time so um the resistance area on this part you can see was right here the the 4200 once the bulls were able to get through it they had some pretty easy selling the next resistance was here that was 4,300. They got through it. They used that as support, and then they got up. But here's the issue that I that I have, and why I believe that we're we're coming down, probably down to the to the 4,000 level, even to 3,900. Is we have these bearish divergences in place, and we have a wave structure. One, two, three, four, and here's our wave. Wait, well, hang on a second. Uh, here's five, or maybe we're making another little five. But the the thing with this one is that we had the big move to the downside. Uh, well, a nice move. But the thing is, is that we left the open gap here. And and this was what I was telling members is that the, the these gaps pretty much will get filled all the time. Sometimes it takes a, a you know, it, they don't do it right away. But when you, especially if it's on the downside, uh, you, it, you very rarely want to believe that this thing is going to go straight down until this gap is filled. Uh, it, it's just, I don't know why the, the bears always work like that, but we're getting pretty close to filling that gap. And when it does, maybe they need to test the highs because one thing that you also want to keep, want to understand is that tops are rounded tops, meaning that they, they you're going to have the bulls that are always, they're not going to believe that the, uh, that the rally is coming to an end. And they're going to keep buying it. And what happens is it becomes a rounded top. But bottoms are V bottoms, where once they're in, everybody just jumps right in. So rounded tops, V bottoms. That's another thing to understand on that. So, but anyway, hopefully uh, this, you know, was what helped you out some. Like I said, the, the biggest uh, takeaway I would do is the, you, you want to, it, the, the bearish wedge and the bullish wedge is, the, they're, they're the easiest patterns to trade because there you just see things are getting exhausted on either the downside or the upside. And the, if you just follow them and then look for these signals, these divergences, when technical indicators are going wrong. Now, the technical indicators, there's a ton that you can use. Uh, you have the MACD. Uh, I personally like using... Uh, the, the price oscillator. And I, I have it at 14.9 with an 18 symbol. It doesn't, you know, that, that's just what I, I prefer on it. Um, but the, the, you know, the, there, there's a ton of different, uh, you know, if you just go in and I go into, uh, hang on one second. It's freezing here. Hold on. I mean, th this is what I'm talking about. These, these are, there's so many different indicators in there, but the, the ones that I would say are, are probably the, the most, uh, the most used are the RSI. Well, some people use the Bollinger Bands. I don't go near them. Uh, the RSI, which is, well, the MACD is one, uh, right? Um, that's not the MACD. MACD, here it is. MACD, then you have the, uh, the RSI is another very uh very good one that that people use 
And like I said, I, I personally like using the uh, the price oscillator. To me, it just, it, it, I don't know why, it, it just seems it's always worked for me and I, I like to use it. But like I said, there, there's a ton of them. It, it's, you know, impossible to know exactly which one works best. Uh, I just really use it for they look for the di divergences. So it, it's, uh, you know, it's one of the things you, you have to feel it out, see what you like the best, uh, you know, price oscillator or MACD uh, or RSI. Those are really your two, uh, the, your three most common ones. So, um, but anyway, like I said, the wedges are, uh, are, are very, you know, they're, they're the most important things to keep an eye on. And then um, with, with support and resistance, it's very simple when you get see a big move down and then it bounces up. This is, you know, this is the important support area right here. And when it's taken out, you're going to see the reaction trade is going to be momentum is going to pick up on the downside. So and then, you know, what it is now, if you look here, once we took this out, this is your important resistance area. And then once we took, you know, once we came down, now this is your important. So whenever you see we come up and we go down again, that's your important resistance. And if they get through this resistance, they're going to make it to this one. If they get through this, they make it to this. And if they start clearing them, then we're in, in an uptrend. So that's really about it that I have. Hopefully you guys uh, enjoyed this. Again, what would really help out is if you... Uh, Click on the, the, the like button, click on the subscribe button, click on the, the notification and take the link and, and share it uh, in social media. I really want to try to grow this uh, as, as large as possible. And on top of that, we, you know, I'm going to be giving tradable information. So some of the stuff I've been showing you is, is live, but I, I do video reports on a nightly basis and they're, they're pretty much for the premium members that we have. But the thing is, um, I do the, I, I, you know, I can put them out on here too. So the more people that we get on this channel, the more information I'm going to get, but I'll be doing these weekly uh, uh, tutorials and, and hopefully I'm going to get better at them each time. And uh, if, if you guys want me to cover anything, please leave a comment below. Uh, if you want me to improve on something, just leave me a comment. Like I said, this is only the second video I have done. Uh, hopefully I'm going to get better at it. And with that, I'll see you at the next video.